I'm Riggs Eckleberry, co-founder, chairman, CEO of Origin Clear. The government needs to continue to provide a lot of abundant clean water. But what happens to it after it's used, when it's dirty? Do you know that 80% of all sewage is never treated, it's just dumped? That leads to water scarcity, but it also leads to a lot of disease and pollution, the ocean turning into something horrible. At the same time, the cities and counties are not getting the funding they need to really treat the water, and so they can't keep up. The solution is let the people who use the water clean the water. Water on demand is investment in actual capital assets that earn income. Sign up to hear my weekly briefing every Thursday night, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. Just put oc.gold slash CEO in your browser, register for the briefing, and I look forward to hearing more from you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first briefing of June 2022. And uh, I see people arriving rapidly. Water is a new gold, and it is June the 2nd. Take a look at this because we're going to be re revisiting this. Uh, Origin Clear develops high growth clean water assets. We're, that's, that comes out of the institutional pitch deck, which we'll be reviewing today. Meanwhile, I'd like to take you right into a show that we did around crypto, and I think you'll enjoy it um, as we delve into some of the crypto um, implications for what's happening. Now, yes, I hear the crypto is down and so forth, but we are many months away from doing anything in crypto. And I think long-term, crypto is here to stay. We saw the end of the world in 2018 and it roared back. And uh, it's kind of how the game goes, I guess, in crypto. It is what it is, right? All right, let's go ahead and play this little show and then we'll continue. Today, we are joined by Riggs Eckleberry, the CEO of Origin Clear. Origin Clear has developed and licensed a decentralized system, crypto people decentralized, that treats industrial and agricultural wastewater worldwide with very little energy use and no chemicals. It also allows industrial users to treat their water right where they use it, putting control back in the hands of the consumers. That is a mouthful, guys. I know you're not used to that. But we're going to talk about that just now. And let me tell you, it, it'll be worth the wait. Korean, it's interesting that you bring up crypto first, because we know that we're moving away from a currency-based system to more of a commodity-based system. And so even though crypto can be considered a currency, it's really an asset class. But I'll get to that. And it's even better when it's underpinned by real assets, such as monetized water, for example, change happened. Early on, it was technology. We had this breakthrough technology, as I was saying. But the problem in the water industry, again, is technology adoption is very slow. It takes 12 to 15 years for any technology to be adopted in the water industry. And we didn't have that kind of time. So we realized technology per se is not the solution. It's an enabler, but it's not. it doesn't break through. We then started to acquire companies, which We've been doing well and we've been building properties. And then in 2018, I had a, a crypto experience, which I'll discuss later. And finally, we came to the COVID era when we realized we really had to do something to change the entire basis on which water treatment is done. And that led to this current thing called water on demand, which is water as a managed service. And of course, we can dive deeper. But that's that kind of takes us to the present. That's a really an important point. Coming from South Africa and growing up pre-apartheid and post-apartheid, and even now, after Mandela's passed so many years later, there are still lots of water issues in South Africa. There are even water issues here in Taiwan where I consider it very advanced, but we'll get into that. I know our listeners tune in for crypto, so we could start off with the crypto stuff first. And you mentioned 2018. So what happened in 2018? Okay, so just to backtrack a couple of years, in 2016, I read a Lux research study. It was a webinar on decentralization. And it basically said, look, all the centralized systems are failing. In America alone, we are falling at the time $50 billion a year behind on needed infrastructure upgrades. And by the way, the Biden administration, they did a huge multi-trillion dollar infrastructure bill. And it was only $55 billion for water. So that did nothing, right? So the federal government funding less and less, cities not being helped, also standards being raised, so more and more demands and more and more industrialization. And it said, look, the trend is clear, it's moving to the edge. And I had an epiphany, I'm like, this is it, this is what's happening. And I started talking about it and I got absolutely nowhere. 
No, decentralization of water. What the heck you talk? I flush my toilet. It goes away. What's my problem? Talk to the industries whose waste is not being taken by the city because it can't. And unfortunately, that is not a, what industry goes through is often just not visible to the general public. But it led to a realization in the fall of 2017 that crypto could be a very important component in this decentralization. And I've always been looking for a, a lever to accomplish change in the water industry. And I went, you know what? This could be a very interesting way to go. And I started to theorize a coin at the time called Water Chain. And it was basically a way to, to monetize water. And I spoke, for example, at the D10E conference that year, which is a decentralization conference, and spoke in Puerto Rico at the Restart Week that year and so forth. And two things happened. The first thing, of course, we hit crypto winter, which made it very hard to continue. But that, that wouldn't have stopped us. The more important thing was that we realized there is no single price of water. In oil, you have Brent crude and you have West Texas crude. These are prices that are known and everything is based on that. There's no such barometer in water. So you can't build a market if you don't have a price. And that's when we realized, look, the, the, this isn't working. And we pulled back and started working on some of the fundamentals. The first thing piece was, if you're going to have decentralized systems, then you have to have the delivery systems for it. But I'm getting ahead of myself. That was phase one of crypto. And now we're going to phase two. Very interesting. And water coin, fascinating and pulling back. And, and I love what you said, you can't build a market if there's no price. And, and it's that is definitely a pearl of wisdom. Pulling back and talking about things at the moment, right? Because you are someone who has global experience and, and, and a mm. lot of years of experience. A lot of people are in disarray, not just with the traditional stock market, but with the crypto market as well. And I, I want to get your take. And especially, I think our users would love to get your experience. Why do you think the market is coming down so often and coming down so heavily? Is it, I love that you mentioned the phrase deglobalization. Is it a factor of that? And what do you think the reason is behind the way things are existing economically and globally at the moment? We're now looking at self sufficiency is the new slogan. And we've seen this in our water business. We operate two production facilities, one out of Texas and one in Virginia. And what we've seen is an influx of demand for self-sufficient water treatment in housing developments, RV campgrounds, trailer parks, travel stops, the kind of hotels, human communities that need to make sure that their humans are doing okay. And we realized that this is a trend that is only going to amplify. The overall trend is self-sufficiency. And I think that's going to be a growing trend. And it reinforces this idea of self-sufficient water, which you know, brings us to some of the enabling ventures that we've put in place. And I would say that it's related to the decentralization thing, because again, you're not going to rely on a municipality. You may not even get to clean water. You may have to have your own well. These are all considerations that people are thinking about now. Would you say what you're trying to do at Origin and Clear, the idea of, of decentralized water, is it very analogous to the idea of more and more people in the places where you can get it with solar and like Tesla power walls where they control the electricity and if they generate more, they get to sell it back to the electricity company. So you are no longer relying on, on the centralized electricity provider. You are creating your own electricity from the sun and you're selling it back to the centralized provider. And is what original clear is maybe the long-term goal is for when it comes to consumers that you are responsible for your own water. And the energy analogy is very good because we're moving away from a big central grid, which is very vulnerable. I was interviewed for a publication recently about cyber attacks on water. I'm like, look, if water treatment goes local, you don't have a cyber attack. That was the original idea for the internet until they decided it, as originally designed, it was hardened against nuclear war. Today, it's not. You can take out the internet like that. But back then, the way DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Program, designed it, each node was completely independent. And that's a good strategy to have. That's the strategy that the world is following with this quote unquote deglobalization. Origin Clear, we are a clean water innovation hub. By that, I mean that we develop these very useful properties. And we, now we have five. 
that are at various stages of development. And we've currently launched one, which is this Water On Demand initiative. And that Water On Demand initiative is very important because in early 2020, when the world stopped, we realized that we had to do something to enable financial transactions in water to happen for these new decentralized users who couldn't just do a municipal bond offering as utilities do. They just had to take out a loan. And if you're a brewery and you need a water system, you want to invest in brewery systems, not a million dollars to treat the water. That's not your priority. And so we say, well, that's fine. Just sign here. You'll get your machine and it's fully managed. Don't worry about it. That's a boon to the decentralized user because they never intended to get into the water treatment business. This, none of us plan to take care of our own water. So when it comes along, because we have to, then it makes sense to make it frictionless by creating an investment vehicle. And so water on demand, we call it water like an oil, meaning that investors can invest in a water system. And it's actually a basket of water systems, very much like what is known as master limited partnerships in the oil industry, where they have a basket of properties so that one oil, one oil well can fail, it doesn't matter. So it, essentially it's a commodities basket and it generates royalty. We're doing the same thing. Now, for the very first time, ordinary investors can come in and invest in water systems and receive a residual and the users at the other end don't have to come up with the capital and they pay by performance, which is very ethical in my opinion. So that is what we're working on to enable all this. Now, the next step is the crypto step because now we're paying out residuals and we're paying it out for a long time. These are systems that are gonna last at least 25 years, more likely 50 years. And so it's generational residuals. And some people are not interested in waiting 50 years for their money. So what do you do? The, uh, and it's like that NFL player who put his contract into a coin and then people were able to buy pieces of the contract at a discount and he got his money now and they wagered that he would actually not get hurt. This is the insurance companies do this, for example, where you're able to, to get net present value out of a future income stream. And so what we decided to do was to wrap these dividends in an NFT or asset coin. It, People say, is it an NFT? Is it an asset coin? And that's TBD. To me, the structure is less important than the function. But let's assume it's an NFT for now. And we call it dollar H2O, dollar sign H2O. We've already trademarked it. And we've got it well worked out to where now there's a stream of revenue from these paper gallon systems. That means every gallon of water is paid for in this system. Now we have that magical price that we were looking for. And then we wrap it in an NFT a royalty generating NFT. And then you, Creon, who invested, I don't know, $20,000 in the system, you get your little residuals, 25% of net profits forever. And you go, okay, it built into the NFT is a smart contract. So the entire revenue stream, lifetime revenue stream from, from this investment is built into the NFT. I transfer it to Riggs. And now Riggs has that and pays for it. Now you have this very low friction marketplace for water. Now, for the very first time, people are able to trade water assets. And that is what we're working on currently. We've had to separate it from water on demand because in the United States, the SEC is very picky about companies that play with crypto. And so we're doing it as, as its own thing. But it's, it's imminent. It's being worked on. So that is the vision there. The key part, again, is number one, it's actually based on if, if you imagine the future app, you will see the amount of gallons being treated by the system you've invested in and how much money is throwing off. And you will also have a known price for that water. So for the very first time, I have a, a water risk in Northern California. I can offset it with options on Singapore water. And now we have a global marketplace. And that is the vision. We think it's high time that we had a water coin and again, I believe the future in crypto is asset-based because putting aside Bitcoin, which is its own special case, I believe that altcoins need to be more than a vapor. They need to be based on something real. Wow. If I'm not mistaken, a regular person can put in capital into original clear. Correct. The breakthrough with water on demand is that we've enabled the regular investor to invest in water, something that could not be done before. You could only buy municipal bonds or EFTs or shares in Veolia. You couldn't actually invest in productive water assets directly. This is the breakthrough. Now, currently, right now, you need to be 
either a non-US or a US accredited investor, one of the 1% to invest. Now we don't care how much you invest, but you have to prove if you're in the US, you have to show that you are making a certain amount of money and so forth. But this summer, we do intend to roll out an unaccredited offering so that people can come in and invest at a much lower level and still get residuals on these systems. So we want to democratize it. I have operated in the public space now for 14 years through the graces of accredited investors. And I think they're wonderful people. So, uh, it's so much better than trying to work. Every time I try to work with Wall Street, is they've been very predatory. Like, we'll help you, we'll help you. No, they won't. They're only help, there to help themselves. Come on. It works if you have scale. But if you don't have scale, you work with these angels because they're patient. If you treat them right, they'll treat you right. Anybody who's stuck with us has done well, even though you can look at our stock graph and we've had a history of losses because we're developing. But accredited investors have done well because we've made sure that they are protected from loss. And I also believe that we've now built enough value in the company that we are now turning into a series of crowdfunded properties that the common stock itself is now, I believe, going to be start to be worth something. I think a regular investor today, even though he can't yet go into the water asset play, he or she can certainly invest in OCLN. I love cheap stocks because they go from two cents to four cents and you just doubled your money. It's fantastic. Whereas Tesla goes from 1200 to 1300. That's nothing. There's no change at all. And yet that's a lot of money. It's something that I believe everyone should have in their portfolio, which is a nice little cheap stock. And because it's got that upside, of course, it's got risk. But by now, I think we've shown that we're very good at being a kind of a incubator for these interesting water plays that are, I believe are going to be real bricks in creating this new self-sufficient independent water independence world that we're moving to. And I totally agree. And thinking, I think anyone, if they've been alive like the last 20 years or so, they would have seen emergent data about water crises in a particular country, but throughout the world, my parents are dual Irish South African. And in a place like Ireland, where it's like rains all the time, mm -hmm. Ireland has a water crisis. Irish people always joke if the government ever started charging for water, they'd be a riot. But at some point in the future, environmentalist friends of mine in Ireland are like, yeah, the government has to start charging for water because <clears throat> they have a problem with treated water and untreated water and giving clean water to people. And, and that's the trend that's it's going to expand to pretty much everywhere in the world. And, and I think what you're doing is fantastic. Because I, I think that we should be able to survive what happens to government because you can't just say, well, government will always be fine. China's living through tre tremendous disruptions that are highly arbitrary. And the poor people in these highly locked down cities are like going, well, wait a minute. And I'm really looking forward to rolling out a really solid water coin that enables this kind of liquidity, <laughs> you're going to use the word, in water marketplaces. I mean, talking about like a blockchain and Ethereum and when you do roll out a water coin, not if, are you going to make your own blockchain? Are you going to build it on top of something else? Is there any inkling towards that at the moment? That's why I like NFTs, because you don't have to create a whole infrastructure. You don't have to like program down to the metal. You can, you know, sit on top of the NFT standards and basically just code uh, a product. I lean towards that. I, I would say that it's an 80% NFT pr proposition. Riggs, I really appreciate your time. Is there any sort of like final thoughts you want to mention about Origin and Clear or crypto? No, it's been a real pleasure, Creon. And I would say this, that let's think about the long term. Let's not get excited about the day-to-day, -day, about the noise that's happening and pandemics and conflicts and this and that and the supply chains. Just try to think in longer, longer term and let's try and build for what the world will be like in five or 10 years, because it's going to happen faster than we think. If we do plan well, then we'll be helping to build this new world. And I think it'll end up being this hybrid world of self-sustainability with a good modicum of government resources. And I think it'll stabilize out that way. And I think that'll be a better world in the future. So that's my feeling is let's, let's work for the long term. Rick, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. I really hope we can get you on in a few months time or like maybe once you guys start doing the crypto thing. And Korean, I look forward to it. Let's check out in six months or so. I'd love to uh, give you an, uh, an update on where we are. Right on, right on. Well, that was very interesting. Obviously, we're about to enter a Regulation A offering, which means a registered offering with the SEC. 
which means that we are going to be um, asking the S Securities Exchange Commission to approve our offering, and they don't particularly like crypto. That's just how it is. So we've clearly separated it. It's going to be a separate, different initiative, and that's why it's not part of the current menu. But hopefully in this podcast, it shows you some idea of what's going on and what's happening, and um, we'll be updating you soon. All right. Well, that was our little show for the day. I see that there's a ton of chats been going on. When I'm playing a video, I can't reply to a chat because it stops the video. That's what I've learned. So, well, Ken's doing a great job of answering. So I'm going to keep on rocking. Oil prices. Hmm. Very interesting. Well, oil prices are up and down. I believe they're overall going up. Investor Place Digest from yesterday. Obviously, we've been watching uh, West Texas crude go close to 120. Then it came back because theoretically now OPEC is going to take the stuff up, whatever. That's in general, oil is going up and that's how it is. But let's, let's keep looking. This is not really the point here. I have a point to make. And by the way, here's that cool binding income in the oil patch where MLPs, which we're creating a water MLP structure, um, is a very well, if you're looking for a way to make your dollars work harder in today's inflationary world, check out MLPs. Well, that's excellent. It's a very good advice uh, for energy. We are doing the same thing in water. Now, uh, uptick in the CPI number. Now, CPI is generally, it, it, went, it went down a little bit, but the problem is, is that the price of energy is a big piece of the overall number. Now, what we're gonna see here, um, let me just, uh, I'm gonna have to take this off, um, off the uh, full screen because it does weird stuff. Let's take a look right here. So this has been the price of WTIC. And it goes higher and higher and higher than it fell. But here's the situation. Because oil is going up, inflation is going up. But let's, let's say this. You're going to see, even though inflation continues to rise, the inflation number is going to drop. Why? Because it's like, it's like buying Tesla stock versus buying Origin Clear stock. If you double Tesla stock, it goes from, I don't know, 1,500 to 3,000. Ridiculous. Uh, Origin Clear goes from, you know, penny, penny and a half to three pennies. It's not a lot of dollar difference, but it's a huge percentage difference. Well, that's exactly what's happening here with inflation. Take a look at here. If you start at $100 and you keep inflating, here's the inflation rate. Your inflation rate goes down, 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 down. You still got from $100 to $400, right? Because the basket of goods began at 100 and at the end of the period it costs 400, even though inflation appeared to have cooled. So as your prices go higher, the apparent inflation rate goes lower, but in dollar terms, it's continuing to rise. So watch for that. In this case, the price went up the same $20 every single month, but because of the math of numbers, you know, a bigger number on top, a number on top of a bigger number on top of a bigger number you get a smaller percentage increase. That same increase is a smaller piece of a large number. So watch out. Uh, we're entering a period in which the starting values for inflation calculations will be so high that headline inflation numbers should drop. But that's not gonna affect your wallet. Now, so that's why we gotta look at other measures. And this is a point where 70% 70, uh, 70 of the US um, gross product is US consumer. Well, what's going on with that? Unfortunately, the U.S. consumer um, is, by the way, is it, there's a bifurcation between high-end consumer and low-end consumer. High-income consumers appear to be going along okay. Low-income consumers are you know, having a hard time. They're buying much cheaper. They're basically seeing a very big difference. So that is, if we go keep, keep scrolling along here, economic confidence is negative 45 and it's the lowest confidence has been since early 2009. And that is the thing to watch for. Okay, so that kind of covers that a little bit. And, and the reason I bring this up is because we are entering an inflationary phase. We are in it. It's going to continue. It's going to apparently abate, but watch the actual real numbers. They will continue to rise. That's my thought of the day there. It's not a pleasant thought. Uh, on more pleasant topics, um, we got some press. Let's take a look at the press we got. Eat this, not that. 
And so we got placement in a magazine that has very good coverage. And um, basically we talked about uranium in the water, which, oh yes, uranium represents an important risk factor for chronic diseases. And it uh, turns out that these highest concentrations are unfortunately in um, certain communities. Government says it's okay, but it may not immediately kill you, but it can lead to long-term health conditions. So we got that met, we got that coverage. And in fact, we got hits in Yahoo Life and Yahoo News with um, their big, unique readers. So that was very positive. You saw this, most of you saw this, Jamie Dimon um, saying what is pretty obvious that um, things are getting very interesting. And basically he's saying, you know, economic hurricane. The problem is everybody's going to cash, but cash is losing value. So the smart thing to do, of course, is go to, to go to assets. We'll cover that in a little bit in the institutional presentation. Two factors, Fed's decision to reduce the amount of securities. So it's basically selling off in the stock market. And by the way, when you're selling $95 billion a month in the stock market, yeah, that can hurt. Of course, the war in Ukraine sanctions on Russia are not well thought through, and this is not a great time for us to be gambling away. But then again, um, that's kind of how it is. All right, I'm going to jump into the institutional pitch deck. I promised to do that. And so let me cover that really fast. So this opens it. Why? Because we have this huge jump of mortgage rates. That obviously spells doom for the real estate market because the real estate market is highly dependent upon debt. Now you say, well, yeah, but you know, it's a safe asset, et cetera. And that's probably true. I'm not going to say you're in deep trouble if you're in real estate necessarily, but you're buying very expensive and you're paying big dollars for it. Um, it's hard to sell more and more because of the high price and the debt problem, I mean, the um, interest problem. Um, is there an alternative? Well, obviously, you know what we think it is. We develop inflation-friendly clean water assets and we're entering an economic perfect storm. Deflation of assets, meaning, for example, the stock market, crypto and so forth, and also, for example, commercial real estate's in real trouble. Um, Inflation is out of control. Supply chain is breaking down. You know, a thousand ships stuck outside of Shanghai. That has what's called the bullwhip effect. When something happens way, way down the supply chain, by the time it gets to you, it's majorly amplified. It's literally called the bullwhip effect. Green policies that affect resources negatively. For example, water use, you know, affects use of resources for green purposes, or for example, uh, planting crops for biofuels and therefore humans not being able to have food, things like that. Where do we find safe harbor in the storm? Well, obviously assets, real estate is vulnerable to these interest rates, precious metals are already high priced, they don't generate income. I personally am still buying uh, because it's still better than dollars. Commodities are already high priced, Stock market is turning down, and unfortunately, Bitcoin moves with the stock market. And now we're looking at the exchanges like Coinbase not necessarily guaranteeing our money. So not a fun game. Is there a better asset class? Financial shelter and stability. A green world-changing benefit. Freedom from economic disruptions. Large upside potential. Water. It's been a government monopoly. However, there's a failure of central infrastructure. Migration to secondary cities, cities like where I am, the Tampa Bay area, um, which means a, um, a load on those less developed water systems. And people want more life security, food, land, energy, and water. Everybody's thinking about that if they are looking at the risks of their life. Now, big water is the old model. These giant players live on the municipal market. It takes a long time for new technologies to be adopted. People are still building water systems by hand. And these new private water systems don't have capital. We need a new paradigm and we are the change agent. We're highly adaptable. We've proven we can raise capital from everyday investors. We're very good at that. Um, we have fast growing production facilities. In Q1 alone, we were up 50% over Q1 2021. And that in, for the water industry is ridiculous. Water companies don't grow 50%. We're building the new asset venture, which is what on demand. And we have experience in crowdfunding. We did a Reg A back in 2020. And of course, crypto in 2018. All right. We have a roadmap. 
which I'll go into further, so I won't get into this too much. Origin clears the mothership. Here's the diagram I want to get to. Our existing model has been, since 2007, to build value, to bulk up, to biggie up, biggie up, Burger King, right? Um, now, that's nice, but it's like when you have a bunch of kids, some kids miss out. And so it doesn't treat the individual properties well. You end up um, neglecting some. It tends to be a sort of um, focus on the latest, shall we say. Now, in this timeline, of course, we started with algae. Then, of course, we had to pivot to, to water tech because the um, price of crude dropped so much that algae was not feasible. 2015, acquired PWT, progressive water. We made modular water systems in 2018. We worked on water chain in 2018, had to pause it, but that's eventually going to become this um, dollar H2O uh, crypto. Also in 2020, we worked on developing water-based finance with projects like uh, Water as a Career, Investor Water, and ultimately became Water on Demand. Meanwhile, PWT and MWS came through by tripling their sales in 2021. And 2022, we started working on Water for Us, which is a focus of Water on Demand for self-sufficient communities. And finally, the pump station business exploded where we're seeing a huge amount of business there uh, which you'll hear, be hearing about. Okay, that's the old model. Everything keeps stacking like a bunch of pancakes. Here's the new model. We roll these things out, okay? We've now accumulated five major properties that we're gonna take one by one into the future. Obviously, we think, we think it's gonna be wonderful things for and clear. Uh, why? Because we'll have a piece of every one of these and it, each one of these will actually ultimately become a public company. I've heard people be concerned, like, hey, wait a minute, is Origin Clear not going to become a public company? I'll address that shortly. So right now, Water on Demand with Water, on for, Water for Us is up. Then we plan on the crypto, um, the pump stations of Aramod, modular water systems, progress, progressive water. And that, by then, we'll be able to bring in more. This is a very powerful company. Origin Clear will be the mothership providing management support to all of these so they can remain specialized. And they don't have to all have the their own HR, their own you know, IT, their own legal finance, Origin Clear will take care of all of that. And of course, get management fees for it. All right, so that's the model. And the first incubation, of course, is complete. What on demand, you know the story. It's based on the uh, master limited partnership game and no more massive central systems. Um, it's rather smaller endpoint water treatment. And now we are initiating our first commercial pilot. We have several candidates we are busy negotiating with. All right, uh, I'm not gonna go too deep into this, but basically these are the key points of this that um, essentially make it a very low risk activity. And again, this is a whole flow chart that I won't go into for lack of time, but it's a well-defined program. We eliminate capital expense for these business users, and we also eliminate the need for water experts. We do it ourselves. Now, we actually delegate building and maintenance to low to regional water companies, which means that we're strictly in finance. Therefore, we are a fintech model for the water industry. What is a fintech? A fintech is any activity that tends to, in a way, cut the cord on a certain activities and do things more efficiently, in this case, um, financing of these water systems. And this new water for us is coming out of the demand we're experiencing in housing developments, et cetera. And we are powering water independence for these customers. This is the offering, which I'm not gonna get into right now. Um, feel free to discuss it in, with, with Ken. Um, but long story short is the founding benefits are expiring on this whole program. Now, what do I mean by find, founding benefits? What I mean by founding benefits is, all by itself, water on demand is a fantastic investment, 25% of net profits for decades. Great. But it's early. It's starting. We are still and you know entering a pilot phase. So for that reason, you get a lot of extra stock. Going back to here, you get your long-term royalty. That's the orange part. But we're also giving you 10% of water on demand split up among the people investing the first 20 million. And we're already down to only $17.5 million left. And then over here on the right, you get um, 150% of your, actually 165% of your investment and, in, in Origin Clear stock and double warrants. So it's very powerful. Why? Because you are a founder. 
So that kind of takes us through the, very briefly, through the institutional offering. I've covered it very rapidly, but Ken has a lot of details. And Ken, uh, jump on in and let's... Uh, Can you hear me? Can you was I, I hope I was sharing there. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, I saw everything. Came out great. It, it okay, great. Good. Uh, he did a good job. Um, what I would also add, um, and it, this is just, you know, spice for the sauce, this... Um, this mechanism that we created when we kind of had MLPs in mind because it was something that kind of everybody knew, but I've been approached by multiple companies to invest. I ended up on an accredited investor list. So now I know how, uh, how everyone feels, right? Um, so, it, you know, I go, do you know what I do for a living? No? Okay, yeah. Anyway, um, solar pools. So they're taking regulation A, um, you know, Jobs Act offerings, and, and they're, they're pooling smaller investors and larger investors. And what they're doing is they're taking millions of dollars and they're deploying solar systems in Africa and Asia, and they're, they're actually creating royalty payments. Now, they're, they're obviously not as, as, they're not as robust uh, as water. Um, there's still technology risk involved, you know, things like that. Um, but it, it's now, it's now taken a kind of the solar industry from here you go, Mr. Jones, here's your solar panels. Oh, uh, I need $50,000, please. Right. That, you know, that, that's, that's where the breakdown was. That's where they couldn't get rapid adoption to so now uh, they, they've got that, that same um, utility like aspect and it has exploded the uh, solar industry. So we're, we're simply following some very well-worn paths here by applying this. I would, you know, it's funny we arrived, we arrived at this without knowing about that, and then you kind of spot it afterwards. So it was an interesting thing to get. I got pitched about three times this week. Solar is very interesting, and yeah. of course the Solar City model and all that good stuff. Um, but the the reason the MLPs was very interesting is because it's that sort of um, a series of like what we have here: water on demand subsidiaries, each one of which is a basket of a bunch of properties, right? Each one mm-hmm. of them generating income with royalties. But we can certainly uh, get into the solar analogy and it's probably what something we'll do, especially in the coming Regulation A offering, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, no, I, I, I just think, I think small individual investors deploying capital into energy as, a, as an asset is the same model that, that water on demand represents. Now water on demand is much more vital and it's also much larger as, as far as a total accessible market, which is exciting. Here's the thing. If you deploy energy in places like Africa, if, you help, if your investment helps deploy energy in places like Africa, you're improving the quality of life in Africa, right? You're, you're, you're modernizing the quality of life for people. But what we're doing literally saves human lives you know, on, on a potential massive scale in those same parts of the world. So I, I think it's the definition of impact investing. You know what I mean? And I, I really think that that... Once we get in front of the folks that are really doing this for beneficial reasons, I think it'll be in that combined with the incredible financial rewards. I think it'll be irresistible. Look, green and eco investors want to make money too, right? They don't want to just keep, you know, donating money to new technology. They want to actually make and, uh, you know, grow and preserve their wealth. Um, and I, I think that we're a good vehicle for it. Well, and th- this is the big change that occurred um, in the end of 2021, where we started putting at least half and it's soon going to be much more of all money raised into fixed capital. Mm -hmm. And so now investors are getting away from the roll the dice of the, um, the, the the penny stock roll the dice, Mm -hmm. but they they still have that upside, but they have this anchor of strong, solid assets. Um, I wanted to mention a couple of things. By the the way, uh, Gene Tully wants to know, how's your project in PA coming along, my friend? Uh, We're doing the due diligence which means that I'm not hearing anything back right now. Right. I just sent, I sent, I sent people off to do due diligence. I'll, I'll know more. Um, but we're um, going to talk to the developer too, right? We're going to talk to the developer. There's a couple of items I have the Dan, you saw Dan's laundry list. So I sent it to the realtor and, you know, <laughs> he was like, well, maybe you need to make an offer before we do all this work. So yeah, well, realtors don't, they're like, yeah, yeah, whatever. No, I know. I know. So I, I basically got to make an offer and give, give him some hand money is what they refer to it as. So that may yeah, happen. Right. Yeah, that in other happen. words, quit, quit being a, a, a tire kicker. Yeah, right. Put up a shut up, exactly. Gene Which says I'm a retired RE broker, so he knows the drill. Yeah. 
Um, and Keith is constantly amazed at the uh, organization planning of this company. Thank you, that's Keith Wooten. And let me see. Okay, there's a bunch of questions about ROI and so forth, with Ken, which Ken has addressed. I also wanted to mention Ivan for once is not, does not have a business dinner. And so he's actually, a, he was able to be here. And I wanna say that he was on a podcast last week um, or yeah, I think it was last week or whatever it was recently. And it is a beautiful podcast. We are gonna be featuring Ivan next week where he he's actually, you know, he's encompassed the entire concept beautifully. It's always nice to hear somebody else. And the host is like, whoa. So it's kind of cool. It's gonna be very good, good to watch and, uh, and get into next week. So um, Mike Todd, Mike Todd, I just tried to buy some shares, um, but I get the message, I need trading permission. That's strange. Yeah. Um, go I'm to- I'm on trade right now. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. There's, um, Mike, check the settings on your, your trading um, profile in, somewhere. That's, I, we'd have to take a look at interactive brokers. Maybe we can have Devin take a look at this. What the issue might be with interactive brokers, IB. Because they should, they should they should trade it just fine, but yeah, I mean, uh, you've been buying shares, Ken, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I have a TD account, but just boom, you know, buy yeah. no problem. Yeah. So um, yeah, so just looking looking at the overall situation here, we have of course this inflationary situation combined with a deflation of demand. Uh, so, for example, the the lower end consumer spending less. And they're, they far outnumber the high-end consumer. So if low-end consumers are starting to, you know, um, watch their pennies, then that's going to have an effect on... What is the, that, 30%, 40% of the population spending less money? More than that. I would say that the, the, the lower half numerically is from the... 50 60%? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, exactly. So uh, I had a very dinner with a very good friend of mine last night who happens to be the CEO and essentially the owner of a very large hardware store chain in my region, you know, kind of Ohio, Pennsylvania. They own 24 hardware stores. These are big 50,000 square foot stores, right? This is not a little mom and pop hardware thing. He said, Kenny, what's happening has me, you know, essing a brick, Okay. <laughs> Shitting a brick, if uh, for anyone who doesn't know what that meant, but <laughs> he says I went from a eight to nine million dollar capex run rate, a capex run rate per year. He goes, this year I will do two point one. He goes, I'm I'm hoarding all my cash. He goes, I'm not going to hire, I'm not going to build, I'm not going to I'm not going to I'm not going to open new stores. He goes, he goes, and I'm one of a million businesses that's thinking the exact same way. So this is deep conservatism. People just like, you know what? I got to weather the they, storm. They, they, right. They, 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 you know, they cover up. So this is why getting into a stable, productive asset that is, you know, water just ticks along. Just bu, 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 bu. there's no crashes in water. What people stop drinking water. No, in fact, it always gets worse because there's always more pollution. There's always uh, more environmental issues, et cetera. And also, the EPA keeps rising, raising the standards, right? Which, so, which makes it more expensive to, to produce the product. I, when, I, when I discuss this with investors, I say, look, energy, while being an international currency, which is why it's able to preserve wealth for so, you know, so effectively for so many years, is also subject to the next war or the next move by OPEC. It is, it's hostage to global events, right? So Russia invades Ukraine. We were told that's why oil went up. It was it was it had doubled before then. But anyway, the point is is that global events actually absolutely impact. However, water rates are based on each individual locality, okay, and are completely immune to international drama, right? You know, Russia declares war with Ukraine, or Russia invades Ukraine. My water rates didn't go up. Did did yours, right? So if I want to base my if I want to base an income stream on an asset asset or commodity. I'd like it on an asset on in commodity that maybe does this rigs nice and slowly, but doesn't do this. Right. right. This is it. You know, this is not what you want to earn your money off because on those low points, as you know, energy production has to essentially stop. Water production, by the way, can't stop because the whole all life on earth thing. Yeah. I'm just making a note here for Devin to check out interactive brokers. We'd have to get into it, but I, I made a note. 
Okay, so um, so these are all very good points. And um, so here's where we're, where we're at right now in terms of our track, and then we're gonna wrap it up. Um, right now, Ken's team is working with the existing accredited investors, also with the larger uh, group of common stock investors, and finally getting new investors in, fine. Next phase is the Regulation A offering, which will be sometime this summer. Again, we can't predict when the SEC approves these things, but um, we're gonna, in the next few days, I believe June 3rd is when I will see a first draft of the Form 1A. Oh, good. Yes, I just got that update today. Um, I was gonna say, that wasn't as of this afternoon. No, because no, uh, Prasad's been sick, and but he okay. surfaced. Okay. And our CFO was ill, but he, he had a cold. Anyway, so he surfaced and he said, no, 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 it's, it's time for June 3rd. Um, so that's, that's going on there. Excellent. Now let's allow tomorrow another two, three weeks to get really get it in shape and finalized. Meanwhile, we're also choosing the platform. Either we do it ourselves or we have a couple other, um, large platforms that we're, we're talking to. We'll see where that goes. Meanwhile, we file it with ACC. Conservatively, I'd say early August, we might get as early as mid July, who knows, but Right around there, we'll spend the summer, and this summer we'll have a regulation offering, which is wonderful because it will democratize the whole thing. Everyone's going to be able to get a piece of water. Right. It How won't cool be singling that? people out. Yeah, it won't be singling. Like you can invest, you can. You can right. invest, you can. Exactly. Because that's not what we. That's not. That was not the goal of this water on demand anyway. You know, this was essentially to deliver uh, water investment to anyone who wanted to partake. We absolutely want to democratize it, and, and then. We'll move, and of course, the Regulation D offering will continue in parallel for the right investor. It will have for that. Remember that twenty million dollars right. that that takes that is going to get a ten percent anti dilutive piece of water on demand, in addition to all the other benefits. Then, meanwhile, we're also launching um, Andrea D'Agostini, Dustin Moscato, and myself are working flat out on working with institutional grade investors, and that's the beginning of that deck right there. Right. And so, you know, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll be able to ramp that up. Now that is a slow sale. Why? Because right. Right. diligence, you know, right. and the, the need of the, but that's why we're investing in it now. And uh, <clears throat> we can start seeing some sophisticated investors come in later in the year. And that will help with water on demand capital. Even in early next year, even in early next year, because I believe that I can, I, I believe that, uh, and, and I'm hopeful that I can wrap up the first 20 million especially with the regulation a running in parallel. Um, and there'll be $20 million mm. of capital equipment that can be leveraged to a couple of times that. So the company at, th at that point could go, could branch up, water on demand could branch off and actually go public. It's a much smaller initial public offering. At that point, I think approaching in, in institutional investors and offering them a stake for a much, much larger investment. So it's a much smaller ROI to them. You, if you notice how these... Um, these 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 uh, founders rounds, they put in a million to 20 million, right? That's what they look like. They one to $20 million. And they generally, when these things go public, they, they'll, they'll throw off anywhere from 100,000 to 700,000 percent, you know, just insane um, amounts. Now, the second round, however, is usually like 100 million for like 10,000 percent. Now, oh. when, you, when you tell, yeah, right. When you tell a guy you're going to make ten thousand percent, he doesn't stomp his feet. Okay, they understand that 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 initial canary in the coal mine is completed, and they're comfortable deploying. What's interesting is you'll see in some of these uh, angel in, in these uh, fintech deals, the last round was a billion dollars, and it got like sixty percent. Right, but it was a very reliable sixty percent. Well, not not with Airbnb. Airbnb they almost shut. Right, when COVID hit, it was like. A billion dollars, like, oops, we're not going public. What do you mean we're not going public? So, um, so Silver Lake came in and, get, and bailed them out. We don't even know what those percentages are. Here's my point: the difference. Silver Lake got his pound of flesh. <laughs> yeah, right. So, so the, the 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 difference between the first round of investor and the what's the difference between the two, other than the tremendous difference in amount, time. Those first investors knew that they were going to make not look. The early the, the 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 billionaires created by the by the strike deal and the billionaires created by the Airbnb deal knew going into it it was going to be a decade of making they made nothing. Now, if the early if those early founding investors had and they could have lost it all, by the way, we should mention, okay, 
But if they had to, if they had securitization and they were paid for the entire decade, it would have been a very different story. And got liquid stock, exactly. And got liquid stock in addition. So what we're putting together, what we have put together, I feel is far and away more attractive. And our timeline is to do this in a fifth the time because we are unlike both of those issues, right? So Airbnb doesn't even own a, doesn't own a doghouse. They don't own a doghouse, right? And 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 Stripe doesn't have any assets. Amazon doesn't own anything really. It just processes people's payments. Warehouses. Just, all right, exactly. We're going to have assets and tons of them, so we're bankable. The reason Airbnb was still taking billion dollar slugs after five years is they were still unbankable, right? We're going to be bankable, I believe leave very, very rapidly, because we'll have all of these rich, you know, long, long tail income, right? Banks love long tail annuities. Annuities with the assets, both. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So we'll be able to uh, go to more traditional assets. And, and the thing is, we can continue to allow investors, even when this becomes where we can be exclusively bankable, right? We can still take in investment capital because that can leverage that banking capital. Well, not only that. Really you know, then there's the future of getting into regional centers, et cetera. But now we're getting ahead of ourselves. It is almost okay. uh, top of the hour and right. um, we love it. It's wonderful. Get your personal briefing from the man himself. OC.go slash Ken gets you talking to him and um, he will give you the full picture. You can also call him at our company uh, number extension 201 or just email. With that, I'm going to wrap it up. Everyone bring this to a close. Um, next week is going to be uh, another great briefing. Actually, we've been had a really great audience tonight. I want to thank everyone for, for joining us. And uh, we're, this is getting more and more fun and exciting. I'm having a lot of fun. And uh, despite the fact that I'm learning how to stand up paddle out there every night, which means I fall in the water all the time. Nonetheless, I'm having fun with my job. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. I mean, I, <laughs> yeah, you're, you were dumbstruck there. You're like, oh, what? <laughs> I just, yeah, no, I just. Uh, that's funny. All I right. Mean, Listen. I was also reading comments. I was trying to see if I wanted to. Oh, I get it. I get it. We wrapped up. I can't chew gum and walk a straight line, right? Um, so uh, what I would say is I think we've handled a lot of this stuff. To answer, to answer a meal, no, uh, you know, about the decentralized model. Uh, decentralization uh, is a is a necessity if you're going to deliver certain water services to the world. So I, I don't see an, I, I, as I see global warming or or climate change accelerating. I see that accelerates the need actually. So we can discuss it more if you're interested uh, and you want to get a more in depth look. You can contact my team and and they'll put you in touch with me. With that, uh, talk to Ken. The answer to everything is talk to Ken. That's how it works. Everyone have a great weekend. Thank you very much. And we'll see you next week. Good night, guys.